All right, what's going on everyone? In Vue, you might be familiar with navigation or route guards with Vue Router. These are primarily used, as the name suggests, to guard navigations either by redirecting or canceling the route navigation. When a user navigates, we might want to check for a certain condition. If that condition is met, we'll allow them to continue to that route. If not, then we might want to block the navigation and redirect the user somewhere. In the simplest form, you can register a global guard within the view router using the before each method. This accepts the target route with the to param and the current route with the from param. Within the before each method, you're able to define logic such as checking if the user is authenticated and allow them to continue to the route or cancel it by returning false. Now within Nux, navigation guards work slightly different. Instead of using a before each method like within view, you instead use what is called route middleware. Now, there are three types of route middleware within Nuxt. The first is inline middleware that can be defined directly on the page itself. This gets defined within the defined page meta macro within the middleware property. And this property accepts an array, and within this array we can pass a function which is going to accept the to and from param. And within this function you're able to define some logic that you only want to be executed on this particular page. For example, maybe you might want to check that this route does not contain a param of 123, and if it does, we'll return the abort navigation utility, and this will take us to the default Nux error page. And if you want, you can also include a custom error object and pass in a status code and a message. Now, if this param does not match what we're looking for, we can do nothing and this will allow the continuation to this route. And in the application when navigating to this page with the param of 123, it's going to abort the navigation and it's going to redirect us to the error page with the error that we define. And if we don't have this param defined of 123, it will allow us to continue to that route. The next type of middleware that we have is called named route middleware. These are files that you create within the middleware directory and then these can be added to pages within your Nuxt application. For example, maybe in an application we might want to check certain routes to ensure that a user is authenticated before we continue to that page. This would be a great use case for some named route middleware and it's exactly what I did within an application I built called Web Dev Daily. So inside of the middleware directory, we're going to create a new TypeScript file called authuser. And within this file, we're going to want to export default the define Nux route middleware utility. And for this example, I actually went ahead and used Superbase for the application. So what we can do is use the use Superbase user composable and check to see if the user is true. Now, if we don't have a user logged in and this equates to false, we can then use the navigate to utility and direct the user to a page of your choice, which most commonly might be the login page. And if we do have a user logged in and it equates to true, we don't need to do anything. We'll let the user continue to that page. And with our named route middleware created, we're going to need to add this to pages of our choice. So we'll just add it here within the editor page within Web Dev Daily to ensure users are logged in before they can access this particular page. Now to add the route middleware, we're again going to use the define page meta macro, and then we'll define the middleware property, which accepts an array, and we can pass our middleware file as a string within here. Now, as a heads up, under the hood, Nux normalizes all route middleware to kebab case. So instead of defining auth user as camel case in this array, it will actually be auth user. And now here inside of this application, I'm not currently logged in, so when I attempt to navigate to this editor page, it's going to direct us back to the login page. Now, once we are logged in, the user will equate to true, and this will allow us to continue to that route. Now, the last type of route middleware we have is global, and this is going to run on every single route. Now, to define global middleware, you're still going to place the TypeScript file inside of the middleware directory, but you're going to want to append the .global suffix on the end of the file name. And defining the middleware itself is exactly the same as we've seen with the name middleware, except we don't actually need to define on what pages is executed, it's going to run in every single route change. So for this example, let's just keep it simple and console.log the to and from param. And now if we head back into the application, on every route change that we have, we're going to see that being logged out to the console. Now as we've seen so far, there are two types of route middleware. We have global and then we have page defined either via a name middleware file or inline directly on the page. Now in terms of order, global route middleware will always be executed first, followed by any page defined middleware in the order in which it's defined in that array. 
So let's say we have a global middleware file, a named middleware file, and then some inline middleware. The global file is going to be executed first, followed by the order of the middleware property on the page itself. So in this case, since the name middleware file comes first in the array, it's going to be executed prior to the inline middleware function. Now in the event that you have multiple global middleware files, by default they're going to be executed alphabetically based on the file name. If you do want control over the order, you can prefix them with alphabetical numbering. Let's take the previous example and let's go ahead and add an additional global middleware. By default the order would be the analytics.global followed by the council.global. Now let's say for example we want to have the council.global middleware file executed first. So what we would need to do is prefix the file with alphabetical numbering. So we would need to prefix 01 in front of the council global file, followed by 02 in front of the analytics global file. And the zero in front of the numbers are very important since file names are sorted as strings. So if you don't add this, you could run into some issues with ordering. Now, if your application is server-side rendered, the middleware for the initial page will be executed both on the server and the client, which is similar to how data fetching works on the initial load. If you do want more control over this behavior, you can check for this by referencing the import.meta server or import.meta client to skip running the middleware on the server or the client entirely. And this could be useful if you're looking to reference a value from local or session storage in your middleware where you would not want to have that run on the server since it would not be available. Alright, so that's going to wrap it up for this video. Hopefully you found this helpful. If you did, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.